Listen to these statements. Do any of them sound like you? I really don't need that much sleep. I can't sleep past 5 a.m. no matter what time I go to bed. It takes me hours to get to sleep. I often wake up in the middle of the night and can't get back to sleep. It's so frustrating. I'm always tired. If you're like 74% of Americans, you can probably relate to at least one of these statements. Hi, I'm Julia Lundstrom. I'm a neuroscience and brain health educator and CEO of Simple Smart Science, a brain health company. I'm so excited that you're here with me to discuss an issue that has a major impact on your brain health, but really isn't talked about enough. So why isn't anyone talking about this? It's doing more damage to our brain cells than any other single factor in our daily lives. In my experience, most doctors don't even ask this simple critical question, how much sleep do you get? This should be one of the first questions any doctor asks always. What's even more disturbing is that people never think to seek treatment for their sleeping problems because somehow we're under the impression that everyone, everyone has sleep issues. It's just part of modern life, right? Well, no, at least it shouldn't be. This socially accepted killer is becoming such an issue the National Center for Disease Control has declared insufficient sleep a national health epidemic. Look at what the National Sleep Foundation found in a 2008 poll. 36% of Americans fall asleep while driving or they drive drowsy. 29% of Americans fall asleep or become very sleepy at work. 20% have lost interest in sex because they're too exhausted and 14% report having to miss family events or work functions or even leisure activities in the past month due to sleepiness and overexhaustion. Sleep deprivation and interrupted sleep are not part of a normal life. And let me state this for the record, your brain can and will not function properly under extended periods of inadequate sleep. Let's look at what happens in your brain when you sleep. When you're sleeping overnight, your brain rejuvenates and repairs. You can think of this as the time your brain street sweeps away the normal cellular trash that accumulates throughout the day. Sleep also consolidates and organizes your memories. May, you know, it takes the short-term memories you created during the day and sticks them into long-term memories so that you can recall these memories for many years to come. When you don't sleep properly, you literally physically wreak havoc on your brain and that just makes sense. Just imagine if those street sweepers ran out of time and only got to clean half the, the city's streets in a big city every night. Over time, the buildup of trash would get so bad that the streets would become cluttered with rotting junk and eventually they would become impassable. These streets are your neural networks, AKA the information highways in your brain. What you need to know about sleep deprivation is that decades of poor quality sleep, which many of us are silently enduring, will shrink your brain. Without proper sleep, over time the hippocampus, or the, the memory sector of your brain, and I kinda like to call it the hippopotamus because it's so important, begins to physically shrink. Your blood vessels shrink, your cortex shrinks, and those information highways in your brain you hear about erode like an ancient river through a dried up canyon. The good news is 99% of sleep deprivation cases are treatable, easily treatable, but not with sleeping pills. It turns out that most over-the-counter sleeping pills are only supposed to be taken for two to three nights in a row, and if taken more often, they can actually cause insomnia not get rid of it. Even worse, sleeping pills can very quickly become addictive and often come with a ton of dangerous side effects. What's worse is they should never be taken with alcohol, which is quite often what people take them with to help them fall asleep. I want to help you fully understand the gravity of sleep. So let's take a look at what happens in your brain when, to help you fall asleep and it starts in the morning. When you wake up, there's a chemical level in your brain called GABA that's very, very low. So this GABA chemical acts as a stop sign for your brain signals, which allows your mind to quiet so you can fall asleep. Over the course of the day, your GABA levels regenerate and increase again. 
So by the time bedtime comes around, you have enough gab in your brain for it to shut down all the synapses and all the communication to quiet the brain signals so it allows you to fall asleep. When you sleep, your brain goes through a series of regular sleep cycles. In a full healthy sleep cycle, you spend about 70% of the night in a state called NREM, non-rapid eye movement, and the other 30% in a state called REM, which we've all heard of, rapid eye movement. During sleep, both your heart rate and brain waves slow down, shifting from the short spiky waves you experience all day long to these flattened waves in your deepest NREM sleep. Your blood pressure drops and your muscles relax. This is a very deep sleep stage from which it can be very difficult to wake. I think we've all experienced that. REM, on the other hand, is a very active period of sleep when your brain has shorter, choppier brain waves. This is when you dream. As morning approaches and you're ready to wake up, your body produces more of the stress chemical cortisol. This makes you alert and ready for the day. As you can see, it's a specific process, but many times that process is disrupted nightly. Let's look at why. Most adults need an average of seven to nine hours of sleep a night. The average American gets six. We now sleep an estimated 20% less than we did just 100 years ago. If you're only getting five to six hours of sleep, well, trust me, it's not good. You're probably in trouble already. Why? Well, because sleep deprivation and memory loss are connected. If you're noticing your memory seems to be getting weaker, it may be time to look at your sleep patterns. Let's look at some stats. WebMD states that imaging and behavioral studies continue to show the critical role sleep plays in learning and memory. Researchers believe that sleep affects learning and memory in two ways. A lack of sleep impairs a person's ability to focus and learn efficiently, and sleep is necessary to consolidate a memory, again, make it stick so that it can be recalled in the future. Two of the most common sleep disorders today are obstructive sleep apnea and insomnia, and both deliver huge brain shrinking damage. So what are the signs that mean you may have obstructive sleep apnea? Well, OSA, as we call it, is when the airflow is blocked and you stop breathing for a period of time during the night. This non-breathing period can last from you know, a few seconds for as long as five minutes. And the whole time your brain is starving for oxygen. So if you've ever woken up just gasping for air <gasps> or seen your partner do this in the night, if so, you're dealing with OSA and need to get that addressed. Another sign of OSA is heavy snoring, which is often followed by a few moments of quiet and then a gasping for air. Once again, this indicates periods when you're not breathing. Obstructive sleep apnea is one of the most documented brain shrinking illnesses today and is suspected to be connected to memory loss and Alzheimer's. People with OSA are chronically tired, foggy, anxious, low on their brain power, and they suffer from memory lapses and are often slightly or severely depressed. In one study, 91% of people who suffered from a severe stroke also had OSA. Unfortunately, as many as 80% of OSA sufferers today remain undiagnosed. Why? Because most people don't seek treatment for sleep. If you're more than a few pounds overweight, you have a seriously increased risk of suffering from OSA. Other things that increase your risk include a large neck size as well as smoking. OSA can be identified with a sleep study to determine if you need treatment. Here's a mnemonic to help you determine if you should seek treatment if you think you have OSA. Ask yourself the following questions. It's called stop bang. Snoring, do you snore often and loudly? Tired, do you often feel tired or groggy when you wake up? Observed, have your snoring and grumpiness been observed by someone else? Pressure, do you have blood, blood, high blood pressure? BMI, do you have a body mass index greater than 35%? Age, are you older than 50? Neck, do you have a neck size larger than 17 inches? Gender, are you male? If you answered yes to three or more of these questions, you may be at risk for OSA and need to get checked out. Now, let's look at insomnia. I can't tell you how many times I've heard something like, I don't have insomnia, I just can't sleep more than six hours. I wake up and can't get back to sleep. 
These are the first things people tell me about their sleep. These are serious problems. Insomnia becomes an issue when you either don't get enough sleep or your sleep is regularly interrupted. If you've been experiencing this for more than one to three weeks, you have insomnia. Long-term insomnia is dangerous for your brain's health. Stress, depression, medications, caffeine, alcohol, chronic pain, and inadequate nutrition can all cause insomnia. And insomnia is also one of the main causes of depression. So what do all these issues have in common? Brain shrinkage. Fewer than six hours a night of sleep is commonly associated with hypertension, chronic pain, inflammation, all of which can affect the brain. Insomnia also increases your risk of stroke by 51%. There's no other way to put this. This is a very big deal. In fact, sleep depriv deprivation is so critical that neurologist Dr. Majid Fatui recommended the OSA insomnia screenings for everyone over the age of 50 who snores. He believes these screenings are more important than getting a colonoscopy or, or a mammogram at this age. So if you think you might be suffering from sleep, you need to make some changes to start repairing the damage you're doing and have done to your brain. And here's the good news. Nearly all sleep disorders can be treated and the damages to your brain are reversible. Yay! One study on OSA conducted by an Italian research team showed that just three months of treatment, the patient's fMRI scans revealed that their brains now looked very similar to non-OSA patients. The reason this is significant is because at the beginning of the research, these same patients' brains were as much as 18% smaller. That's 18% brain growth in just three months of quality sleep. I know, it's not as easy as it sounds though. So how can you fix your insomnia? The first thing to look at is your lifestyle. If you drink caffeine after three o'clock, cut that out. Enjoy your morning cup of joe, but make a point to call it quits in the afternoon and replace it with other forms of energy boost, like a brisk walk around the block. If you drink more than two alcoholic beverages nightly, cut that out as well. Alcohol may help you fall asleep for the first couple of hours, but it disrupts the sleep cycles in your brain and you often wake up in the middle of the night. If you work before bedtime, put a hard stop on that work at least one hour before bed. Working, particularly on your computer, keeps your brain active and stimulates you so you stay awake. If you watch the news before bed, another thing to stop. Again, this triggers your brain to stay active in processing mode versus letting those natural GABA chemicals do their thing. If you smoke, there's really no easy way to put this, but it is time to quit. Check your weight, are you overweight? Very often sleep apnea and insomnia completely go away on their own when overweight sufferers shred those ex shed those extra pounds. Most of all, remember whatever your source of insomnia might be or however long it's been going on, you can start repairing and regrowing your brain as soon as you start getting a good night's sleep. The next step is to start healthy sleep habits. Two things shown to have a huge impact on sleep quality are regular exercise and meditation. Meditation has mountains of studies showing its positive effect on brain growth and sleep, so don't knock it till you try it. Finally, it's important to have a good bedtime routine. Eat a meal high in healthy fat and protein three hours prior to bedtime. Just don't go to bed hungry. Maybe you need to eat a light, healthy nighttime snack like a spoonful of peanut butter or almond butter right before bed. Drink a cup of chamomile tea one hour before bed or within enough time to let your body to you know, excrete the fluid. You don't wanna to have to wake up to go pee in the middle of the night. Um, that definitely will dis disrupt your sleep patterns. Also, watch your feet. Set your room temperature to somewhere between 67 and 70 degrees so that your feet are the same temperature as your body because if your feet are too cold, you're not gonna be able to get to sleep. Put on some socks. If they're too hot, move them out from under the covers. Also eliminate those small lights. You know, Remove all electronics from your sleeping quarters, the alarm clock, whatever has that light. Um, I also recommend buying a wave or white noise machine and using it. 
Breathe, turn out the lights, lie down and take three long, slow, deep breaths. It'll create this muscle relaxation. You also wanna kind of flex and curl your toes three times in order to give more muscle relaxation. If you do this with every muscle group in your body, it's gonna even create more muscle relaxation. Just go up from your toes to your forehead and go back down. Think about it, just tighten and release, tighten and release. And then just stick with it. Don't get discouraged and give yourself time. Reducing a sleep deficit can take four to six weeks before your brain is able to achieve the full effects and form new sleeping habits. Trust me, the results are real and they are worth it. Because good sleep equals great energy, which equals an extraordinary life, and that's what I want for you. So thanks for watching, and subscribe if you want to see more of our 10-minute memory hacks. Thank you.